Hey, it's oh oh. There we go. We are live in the studio. It is Bradley J and uh, Marco just saying. It's our little podcast that we got going on. And speaking of Marco, he has been gone. He's been on vacation. That's why we didn't have a podcast last week. So he's back from vacation. It is time to find out from Marco himself how his vacation was. So Marco, you're back from vacation. Good to have you back. I missed you last week. I didn't have anybody to talk to. You're the only person I talked to all week long. And I missed it. And you're on vacation. You were down in Puerto Rico. So tell me, how was vacation? It was beautiful. Uh, the sun was shining. The beaches were open. And the water was cool. It, it was um, a good time. Very relaxing. Uh, we, we were actually on an island kind of off the... We're, uh, off the mainland in Puerto Rico called Culebra. And Ooh. there's like five or six different beaches on there. So each day was a different beach with a different view. And I'll tell you, man, it, something about going to the beach. Are you a mountains or beach guy? Both. Yeah, see, then you, then you, you would like Puerto Rico because you get both. You can see the Ooh. mountains uh, over the ocean at any of the beaches that you go to. It is. It was it was a good week, a good week. I did miss talking to you. I did miss doing the show. I should have done one remotely, uh, if I if I wasn't on a beach without Wi-Fi. <laughs> without Wi-Fi, that is true. That is true. So so I got to ask you. You you went with your family, correct? Yes. Okay, so you're with doesn't... your so you're with your family. So one of the things is, um, did you did you meet any? ladies down there did you throw any game out while you were on the beach or did you have time or with you or were you with your family the whole time <clears throat> you know what on this island there was about two there's two thousand people that populate the island so uh not not a lot of not a lot of game to be thrown unfortunately so no I, it was for the most part like i said those beaches that i talked about there was at some there would be nobody and it would just be us and at others it would be like maybe 10 pairs of people but uh did not have did not have the opportunity to you know it's funny you and my dad both cracked that joke he, he was telling me on our way down there he's like maybe you'll uh find yourself a, a puerto rican girl and not not come back and i'm like i guess maybe that maybe that's all that. but no no unfortunately, yeah, that unfortunately not did not get did to smile to, and wave at anyone. <laughs> did you that because we were we were texting because I almost I was trying to think we had a podcast and I was like, oh no, I think Marco's gone. And I I texted you. I can't believe you didn't have my number in your phone, but now you do. <clears throat> and uh, I I was talking about that. I was like, you were like, how do I throw a game? I have you're like me. I don't think I have any game. I mean, maybe I do, but it's not very good. And uh, you were you were saying you were the same way, and I said, just smile and wave, man. With your good looks and charm, all you got to do is smile and wave, and the girls will come around and. Girls are come running. That's all we got to do, man. Well, you didn't come back married, but you did come back tan, refreshed, ready to go. So I, I've got two weeks of things I want to talk about. I was, yes. I was running, I was running through things, and I was like, "Oh man, this is gonna be great when Marco gets back. This is gonna be great." Have there? I want to start off talking about profanity-free insults. And and the thing is, like, when you get mad at somebody. Like when you get older, your words become more colorful, shall we say. You start using words that you would never use in front of your mom, never use in front of certain company. Though people are surprised because I do use profanity in front of my mom. She doesn't like it. And my sister, my younger sister and I know that she doesn't like it. So we continue to use it. Where It's not like profanity, Latin, just that's the only words we use. Just once in a while, we throw one out around my mom. And she's like, I don't understand why you guys have to use that language because you don't have to use that language we go we know mom we don't have to but we understand what it does to you so we do it and we think it's funny so i, I wanted to ask you what's your favorite profanity free insult do you have one and what is it probably butthead because i feel like it gets the point of cross and it still <clears throat> has that impact of um, of what a profanity word would be, I, but like if you call someone a butthead, I feel like they know that they are like, okay, I am probably being a jerk. Or uh, it's it's one that you can throw out there. Now my roommate, he likes to use, um, and one that I kind of been I picked up on now because you know you do that when you have roommates, you pick up on each other's traits. Is yeah. uh, 
dingus. He likes to say dingus a lot. And <laughs> and I never I heard about I never heard that word or insult until college, but living with him for four years, I've picked up on it. So we'll call each other dinguses every once in a while. But my favorite one to throw across that I use at uh, my friends, brothers, family, I just butthead. You're a butthead. Okay, I wanna... You're a butt. And you're a butt head. Nobody wants to be a butt, and nobody wants it to be on their head. So I mean, it's a good, it's a good profanity-free insult. Here are the top three I ran across on the internet. Uh, number three, Marco. I hope the rest of your day is as pleasant as you are. Whoa. Because you're, you're being mean. Because you're being mean. You're trying to insult someone. They're being a dingus, and so you throw that out at them. I like that one. That's that one's like a you know, the tone of voice is you're gonna have to get the tone of voice right on that one. Uh, yeah, you know you don't want to hear someone say that to you in a low tone because then it's like ooh that's cold. Yeah, number two favorite profanity free insult. You know Marco, you're the reason shampoo has instructions. Where are you finding these? What? <laughs> Use that one next time you get mad at your uh, your roommate. Just look at him and just go, you know, you're, you're the reason shampoo has instructions. Because shampoo is so easy to use. Put in hand, rub on head, rinse off. You know what's funny? Uh, when, we were, when we were on vacation after a day of hiking, my mom was like, you know what, Marco? You don't smell really good. And I'm like, I wonder why. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That, would, I, that one's very creative. I like that. Okay. The number one. Profanity free insult I came across on the internet is this. Marco, you are impossible to underestimate. Okay, this obviously this these, <clears throat> these this obviously is probably coming from like a more mature crowd than what I'm used to. <laughs> because I come in with butt head and I'm like, all right, that, <laughs> these no, that are much more well thought out and are smarter. <laughs> Well, they are, they're smarter than you and I, both together now. You know, my favorite profanity-free insult, though, is your mother is a hamster from Monty Python. Have you, have you ever seen the Holy Grail? I, I, I have seen, I've seen, I've not seen it, but I know what movie you're talking about. Yeah, that's where it he goes. Somebody, right? Yes, he goes, your mother is a hamster and your father is elderberries. But I just like to go with your mother is a hamster. And anytime you can throw your mother into a profanity free uh, insult, it's good to go, man. It's good to go. That's what I'm saying. All you have to say is your mother and some and people and no it doesn't need to follow up sometimes. That one right there is another good one. Uh, your mother. Oh yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, my mother what? Go ahead, finish that sentence. Go ahead. Oh yeah, that's what I thought. Set back down. Well, I'm whooping your butt in Madden. Just sit down. Don't talk about my mom anymore. All right, I want to move on to, because I know you went on vacation, and uh, this next one was I found in some show prep uh, to get ready for my show on 94.5 Country, and um, it has to do with restaurants. We all know mm -hmm. restaurants are are open. They're back. You probably went to a few restaurants. Any favorites down in Puerto Rico when you were on vacation? Yes, Uh Lots of seafood. I can tell you that right now. Uh, we I can't remember the name of the restaurant we went to on our last night, but we ha I had a thing called uh, Mofongo, which is fried plantains, and then you um, can put crab meat on it, shrimp on it, chicken on it, um, any type of protein or seafood, and then they put like a garlic sauce on top of it. It was Ooh. very delicious. Don't remember the name of the restaurant, but yes, lots of good. That one was probably my favorite, the last night there. You always have to go all out on your final night of vacation. So there wasn't like a, the wait staff? Like there wasn't anyone that you could wave and smile at and try to, you know, have drinks no. with after her shift was over? I was too I focused it, on the menu. There was too much on, there was so much on the menu to try. And there were some foods that I haven't tried yet. And I, you know, like I said, when you're there for five days, you have to pick your meals wisely. I'm more, I'm more focused on food now. <laughs> you got to change your focus every once in a while, Marco, change your focus. Okay. So when it comes to restaurants, they're open. People are going back out to them. People are eating at them. Here's a question. Um, Cause a lot of restaurants to get people in to the restaurants have coupons or have deals that you can use is right now too soon to be using a coupon or a discount at a restaurant since they're trying to get back 
into the group of things and make money? Is it too soon right now? Um, no, not necessarily because those coupons are still valid and you can still use them. I guess one thing that you could do if it's a sit down restaurant, um, you can replace what you, you know, take, take the amount of the coupon and put it back into the tip for your server. So you can still use it. So you get $3 off a, so, uh, a burger at Red Robin. We'll take that $3 and, you know, move, give it, give it forward. Give it to the, uh, give it to the server. Because they also probably being out of work or maybe let go for a little bit, wasn't making the money. So that's a good idea. So that's a right way to go about doing it. Or, or do you think restaurants right now are just glad to have people coming in the door, even if they use like the coupon, like they're just like, Hey, we love having business in a restaurant. If they got a coupon, let them use it, whatever, just, you know, go to town. I'd like to hear from people that are watching this right now. Um, you can email me Bradley J at nine, four country.com. Is it too soon to start using like BOGO? I don't know. B O G O. What is that? Yeah. BOGO. Your BOGO. Get your BOGO. What is it though? I don't know what it is. Explain it to me. Oh, buy a buy one get one. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, I knew that. I knew. That. I just I looked at it and I was like, what is BOGO? I don't even know what that is. Buy one get one free. Is, is that okay? That's okay to use. Like you go to like and I, my, the first thing that comes to mind is McDonald's. They I think they had a deal not too long ago or still going on where you could buy one get one free. So if you and I went through the drive through, like I would be like, oh yeah, I want to get one. You know, is that too soon? Uh, no, not too soon at all, especially no. for McDonald's. No, it's, okay. you know what? I feel like that maybe some restaurants push, push coupons. So it gets more people, you know, it's like, it lets people know like, Hey, we're back open. Um, come on in and get yourself a buy one, get one, or, uh, maybe a 20% off your order. Uh, you know, cause people want to, people, as the world starts, the country starts opening back up from restaurant sense, you know, you gotta let people know like, Hey, we're back open or else, you know, some people may assume that it still will be closed. Okay. Can I tell you this? Speaking of restaurants, before I move on to the next thing is um, I went to Culver's. Mm. Have you been? Oh yes. The butter burger. I don't think I got that. I think I just got like a, like a hamburger. And I, cause ever I heard that I was like, Oh, I just thought maybe it was like, that's what it was. But I think I just got, and it had everything on it that was, and it was okay. It was good. But it, uh, the expectation for me was a little bit, and usually I don't go into things with an expectation, but I was like, okay, Culver's, I'm going to go this time. I'm going to see what the fuss is all about. So I think I got the wrong thing and it was okay, but I want to go back. So would you, do you think I should go back? Yes. Yes, you should. Okay. Culver's is a big, uh, we're big fans in this household of Culver's, whether it's, we use buy, we actually use our buy one, get one coupons uh, at that place a lot. We get them in the mail. Okay. Get yourself a concrete, get yourself cheese, get yourself cheese curds next time. Not French. Should fries, I just, curds. so after work, should I not work out and go back to Culver's and get the, what, cause it, so do you have to ask for it on the menu when you, cause well, this is my first time going there. So when I went through the drive through and I always hate to be that person that's like, you know, like, Oh, hold on. I can't find, you know, I don't want to be that. I want to be that old person that's sitting in front and holding up the drive through line. But, um, it, do you have to ask for it? Is there a certain number? Like how how would I go about ordering this? Um, it it, it should say it. I mean, I, I always thought I haven't been to Culver's in a while, and if I do go, it's usually for ice cream. But uh, I would assume like it's a, a number one or number two, one of those first three that would you would would be a butter burger. All I'm right. surprised that all I'm surprised that all all of them are butter burgers. I'm I'm saying butter burger, <laughs> butter burger. <laughs> you are butter burger. All right, man. So that and what'd you say? What else? There's that. Get that sandwich. And then the cheese curds. That's a that's a sport. That's a five eighty sports talk uh, hidden gem. That everyone everyone there likes the uh, cheese curds. The cheese curds and then the concrete. Just order the concrete. That's what you order. You like peanut butter, right? Yeah. Get yeah. yourself a get yourself a get yourself a chocolate and Reese's uh, Reese's concrete or vanilla, whichever ice cream you want. Okay, I'll try that. I'll try that. All right, I want to give it. I'm gonna get Culver's another try, man. I I messed up my own order. I ate it. It was good. I do like the 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 uh, the fries though. They were the crinkly ones, the, yes. like that. I do. I did dig that. Though. I was like, oh, nice. I like these fries. Okay. I'm surprised um, you've never been to Culver's before. I'm surprised that was your first time. Are you are you like a Wendy's guy? Where do you go for fast food burgers for the most part? 
Um, I go to McDonald's, I go to Wendy's and then I, I go, I, I haven't been to Hardee's for a while cause it's close. So I go there. Um, but, and I like all of them. They're all different. I know a lot of people are like, Oh, it's, you know, Wendy's fries or, you know, McDonald's fries and Wendy's this. And I'm like, just, I'm like, give me something to eat. That's all I care. I'll, I'll go, I'll go to, um, what's the, is it, not, it's not Fridays. Um, man, Freddy's I'll go to Freddy's. I'm not a big, um, I'm, their fries, like I'm not, I wouldn't. That wouldn't be my go-to fries. I I enjoy them, but it wouldn't be my go-to fries at uh, Freddy's. But I'll go there. Usually convenience. Where if it's close, I mean, if I want to drive out of the way, I should try some. Um, I did do a post on the '94 uh, Facebook page talking about restaurants in nearby areas, and I need to go back and look at that because we need to go check some of those out. That, yeah, I will, I'll go check those out too. I agree with you on the Freddy's. Very thin, thin fries. Yeah. That's a no-no. Yeah, just some different. I guess they were going for it. It works because they're still in business. So I mean, it, you and I not liking them is not hurting them at all. No. Um, I want to move on. I want to move on to this. There's a new app, and we were talking about apps before, and how. And I got you to where you don't have a lot of notifications now. Like, don't get the notifications because you'll be looking at your phone the whole time. But here's an app I wanted to talk about. I'm not going to get it because I'm not going to do it. But I thought it was an interesting topic. Hmm. There's a new app that lets you charge people to make decisions for you. Okay, here's how this is how it works. Um, there's an app, it's called New New N E W N E W, and it lets you charge people five dollars to vote and make choices for you, like what to have for lunch. Or who to go on a date with. Then you just do whatever gets the most votes. Here's the thing. Like, I read this and I was like, why would I want to app decide how I live my life? And then I read this. It's mostly meant as another way for influencers to monetize what they do. Oh, and it's crazy, good. right? Would you ever let would you ever let an app if there was, you know, not this what I read there, but would you ever let an app choose what you do in life? No, no, not even, no. Oh. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. I make, I make my own decisions. I can only imagine the ridiculousness that people would pay five dollars to have an input on. Those are the type of people that probably sit at home and are like, oh, I, I, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just see what other people are doing. I'll, I'll pay money to make. I, I don't, I don't understand that at all. I don't understand that concept. New, new. Is it even spelled N W N E W or is it like N U N U? <laughs> No, it's N E W N E W. It's so funny. Like you come up with it, like you can't just by the name of the app. I wouldn't get it. I'm like, if you can't be, if you can't, you come up with an idea for an app and then you name it new, new. No, that it doesn't even go hand in hand with the concept of what the app does. I would it's feel just, better taking um, people's money because, like you, I would, I would be the person that would. The only time I have a tough decision is at the drive-through lane when I need to figure out what to order. But I'm not gonna take. I'm not gonna make someone pay me five dollars. I would feel guilty taking that money. That's just yeah. absurd. But I guess you know, influencers take advantage of people in certain ways. I guess that way. I don't know. That, Very, I do it like reminds, it. It reminds me of that movie with Emma Roberts and one of the uh, Franco brothers, where yeah. they where they um, did things that people. But they, that was kind of the reverse concept. They did they did things that people would pay them to do. Yeah. That was called. That was a good movie, actually. I saw that and I was like, "I'm gonna check this out, man." I like Emma Roberts as an actress. I'm, I'm not, you know, the Franco boys are okay, but I was just like, "Oh, I'm gonna check this out." And I watched it and I was like, "Wow, that was really good, man. That was actually a good movie." All right. Uh, speaking of technology, Ford, okay, just filed a patent for a new technology that would put ads right mm -hmm. on your dashboard. What do you think about what do you think about that? You're buying a Ford and all of a sudden there's a there's an ad on the dashboard. How can first of all, you put an ad on the dashboard, you're driving. Stop inventing things that distract you from something that you should be a hundred percent invested in that could kill people if you're not. Stop it. Weren't we supposed to eliminate screens while driving? Like this just isn't safe. I'm surprised that something like this would get passed uh, for vehicle companies to do it just doesn't make sense what what do i need to watch a 30 second ad before i can start my car now 
Here, here's how this works, okay? I'll tell you. Because when I saw this, I was just like, why would you want this? Most new cars have lots of cameras, okay, right? I agree. They have backup cameras, all kinds of cameras, right? Um, yes. And, they, and they, want you, they want you to use all these cameras that they have on a car. So you have all these cameras in your car. But now they want Ford wants cameras to scan billboards, okay? So ads from the same company. So if it's a Ford billboard that you drive by, your camera will scan that billboard, okay? And then put the, um, it says infotainment screen will come up on your dashboard. So you're driving a Ford, your camera is looking for Ford billboards, it spots one, and then it throws it right on your dash. Now, here's the thing, Marco. They claim it would solve the problem of people seeing a billboard too late and not getting all the details, like which exit to take for McDonald's. But is it really something you want? Uh, I vote no. I don't want it. What about you? No. And that's kind of interesting because that I thought it was only for Ford billboards, not for like exits and stuff. Or is that just no, kind of like phase one of it? It's just for Ford billboards is how I take it. It's not for every billboard. So it would just be. But I mean, like you think you start. It's always like, oh, they start something here. It's just Ford. It won't go any further. Well, if it works for Ford, then everybody else is going to do it. It's just like stop distracting drivers. All right. Well, I mean, I still haven't got over like I can still drive home and I drive my drive is a five minute drive. I can still drive home and spot at least five people on their phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least five. And that's a five minute drive. Like I'm I'm very, I like to think of myself as a, I'm a pretty aware driver. There are times and I'm not saying I haven't been on my phone. I have and I shouldn't. You know, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, you, you, you might catch me. Like, I might be stopped at a stop sign. I'll look at my phone. I've texted. I've done everything that you shouldn't, but I don't do it all the time. Okay. Like, and I try to real. I put my phone on silence so it doesn't ring. There are no notifications. So I don't know. My mom has yelled at me when I'm driving home and she knows about it. She's like, I tried to call you. And I said, you know, I don't answer my phone when I'm driving. So don't call. And she's like, well, can't you just, I'm like, no, it's for everyone. You're not special. Mom, well, sorry. I go, if you want me to, I'll call you when I get close. And I don't like doing that either. But it, it's just weird. It's just, it's one of those things like you don't, and who looks at bill, how, how many yes. times, Mar Marco, have you looked at a billboard and thought, oh, I missed that. I sure wish I had a commercial on my dash right now. So that I could, you know, get all the information on in my car. When was the last time you did that? Uh, I don't even look at billboards when I'm really driving, uh, to be honest with you. Unless it's like those ones where you're driving out to KU or Missouri where they have the MIZ and the Rock Chalk. Those are just blatantly in your face. But there's just, you know what, specifically with Ford, there's already too many car commercials. Why do they need to do this? They already, they already have too many car commercials on TV. You talk about seeing five five drivers on their phones when you're heading home on your five-minute drive. I see three different car commercials every time a show goes to break. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. We, don't need hey, all hey. Of these, we don't need all these new cars ads in our face. People buy used cars now. <laughs> Hey, by the way, we have to take a break because we have a car commercial we have to play to play for, pay for this podcast. <laughs> See what okay. I mean? <laughs> They're everywhere. You can't get away from them. Okay, here's uh, here's the next thing I want to move on to. Have you ever have you ever wanted like your parents made you so mad that you were just like, I got to get away from my parents. I just got mm -hmm. to get away. I used to do this like I, it wasn't really about my parents, but sometimes I just needed to get away. When I lived at home, it was, you know, going to when I was in high school and I just need to get away and just kind of be by myself and think. And I would there was a place I went up to our football field and I sat right in the middle underneath the press box. And I would just sit there, look out at the football field, look out at the field, the road, the highway that went through town. And I would just think. And one time I was up there for quite a while. I didn't realize it. And my mom came looking for me and she couldn't find me. She had no idea where I was at. And uh, I never told her for the longest time. And she was always like, well, what were you doing? I, go, I was just thinking, you know, just being a kid, just thoughts going through your head. Like, you know, how come I don't have a girlfriend? Why don't people like me? I mean, just all those all those insecurities that you have as, as, a, as a young adult. That's yeah. what I went up to think about. And my mom, you know, after I got older and I talked, I talked to her about it, you know, and she's like, well, why didn't you just, you know, why didn't you talk to me and stuff like that? I go, eh, you, you know, it's a parent kid thing. It's just not. 
you know, you just don't do. You talk to your friends. And I didn't have a friend, you know, that I could really talk to or anything. So I was just like, I went up there and I just saw it. But this story is kind of cool. I would never be able to pull it off. I don't know if you would. But there's a, there was a 14-year-old kid in Spain, okay? Mm. 14 years old. Think about that, okay? Yep. Uh, he got into a fight with his parents. And he, he was like, I need a place to get away, to get away from mom and dad. They made me so mad. So he went to the backyard, okay, in his, of his parents' house and started digging an underground cave to hang out in. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. This, the fight, okay, the initial fight started in 2015. Okay. So he's now 20. Whoa. Okay. So he's 14, started digging a hole to get away from his parents. Five years, four years later, no, six years later, uh, he shared, finally shared photos online. This is what the cave looks like, Marco. I'll describe it. Okay, he started with a pickaxe, <laughs> and it was just a hole, okay, at first. Then he found someone with better tools, and he made it 10 feet deep in the backyard with multiple rooms. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got, in this, in this cave, he's got a living room. He's got a bedroom. He's got a heating system, a music system. And Wi-Fi. And he, here's the thing. The, over these six years, he reinforced the walls with concrete to make sure it wouldn't collapse. Smart thinking. But yep. somehow he spent a grand total of how much money, do you think? Uh, probably like fifteen, five thousand. Sixty dollars $60. What? What did did he like find the find rock on the street or something and concrete that like what? I don't know. Maybe he knew somebody that you know. They were like, "This is a cool idea, man. I'll, like here, I'll just give you this concrete that we were gonna we're not gonna use and we're gonna throw it. You know, whatever. We'll just give it to you. Maybe that was the case. Here's the thing. The only bad thing about this cave to get away from his parents, it floods sometimes. Mm. Um, there are a lot of bugs as well. But he doesn't mind that. He, it sounds like his parents have actually been pretty supportive about it. Okay? Because right. six years, they're going to go out there and look. His mother did manage, though, to slip one judgmental comment to, his, to her son. When she yeah. climbed down to see it in person the first time, she told him it was smaller than she expected. Well, what did she expect? <laughs> I don't know. Something bigger, man. Something bigger. Oh, those are what, moms for you. That's a mom comment right there. That's what What have you done to get away from your parents when you they, they either annoyed you or you got in a fight with them? Did you go somewhere? Did you go to your room? What did you do? Did you build a cave, Marco? <laughs> no, no. I, I would not have been. At 14 years old, digging a cave, Marco would have just called it. No, that's too much work. I would have done that and been like, no. I'm okay with that. He must have not have had a basement because a basement <clears throat> basement would be where I would go. I would go for I would go on walks around the neighborhood. Um, most mostly just hang out in my room. You know, uh, my parents. You know, if we ever did get in fights, they didn't really just they wouldn't come bug me if I put if I went into my room um, or something. But uh, that right there, no, not digging an underground tubble, tunnel. That he must have been really annoyed with his parents if he wanted to do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking like he started. He was just like, you know what? Just like forget my parents, forget them. I, I want out of here. I gotta, I gotta make something. I'm not gonna have my own place in here. I got nowhere to go. They're always gonna be around. I'm just gonna build a cave. I'm gonna dig a cave in the backyard. I'm gonna make this happen. And because when he started, he started it. That's what he did. But he just put dug a hole and it go, going under the ground. And the next thing you know, he's underground with six rooms, six rooms with Wi Fi. <laughs> my uh, my parents would have been like, "Why are you destroying my lawn, my backyard? No, stop <laughs> digging. No, what do you? They'd be like, "What do you think you're doing?" <laughs> yeah, I, I can't believe like the story. They, his parents had to come out and you know say that one time. You know, because they couldn't have let it go. They had to have been like, listen, you're not going to be digging this hole. Well, you know, you're going to do something. But it's crazy how far that went. Crazy. But good for him. And he's got, you know what? If somebody reads that story from a college, maybe he'll get like tuition free or like 
uh, reduction in tuition. Because, yep. I mean, that's a pretty good engineer. No, you, you're absolutely right. Maybe people want something like that in their own backyard also. Uh, it yeah. Could be the, it could be the future of tree houses. No more tree houses. Underground <laughs> rooms is what it is. Underground caves, man. Underground caves. Talk Your to mom's the guy calling in Spain. you right now. She's like, I hear you, Bradley. I hear what you're saying about me. <laughs> yes. Is she, that's, can you hear my phone? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Right, it's it's Shayla, and I'll, I'll call her back. So she'll, she'll, I called her. I had a question for her about something. Um, okay, I want to wrap the show up with this, Marco. You're Like me, you love TV, right? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. What? Okay, so... I came across this and I thought this is perfect to wrap the show up today when Marco gets back off vacation. Um, what's the most disappointing series finale, not season, but series finale of all time to me, in your I, mind? I really thought about this. It's Game of Thrones, honestly. Game of Thrones really left uh, left a lot empty um, in that season finale. I know it's kind of I may be a cliche answer because it just happened recently. Some would say How I Met Your Mother. I like the ending of that. And I'm as far as just tear that that right there, I feel like is the last one that I can remember where it's just like I really felt like wow, that was that was the end. That's how it ended. I felt like there should have been more. I agree. I mean, I I couldn't think of. Um... I just got done watching. I, I love the answer, by the way, Game of Thrones. It was, it was disappointing, but I was like, you know, I don't know what they could have done different. I mean, it was. I never get too disappointed in finales. I'm always just kind of like, oh, okay. Yes. I mean, how how are they going to end it? I mean, you know, you're going to be disappointed. Well, for one, you never want the show to end when you're invest so invested into a show like that. You're just like, no, don't. What I was more disappointed when it came to game of thrones was how seriously and his and her brother died in an avalanche that was weak that was that was a weak part of that finale it was just like really you can't give the and satisfaction they, to somebody to kill him they killed jamie's character arc too he went back to being in love with his sister when it's like oh i thought you outgrew i thought you outgrew that thing yeah yeah i kind of wish the best thing about that was when the mountain and um the hound fought yes that was good that, that was good yeah. Um, well, according to what I what I read, and I, I got this again, I do a little research before the show. And according to a survey of more than 1,500 people, it's lost. Uh, that's another popular. I do, rem I do remember when that uh, series finale happened and people were upset. I do remember that. Yeah. Did you watch the show? I do not, but I did hear how it ended. So I did catch yes. the <laughs> I I didn't. I started watching it, and then I think, like, I was younger and either like I couldn't afford TV back then. I had something happened or I just stopped watching it because I think I was DVR and things. And there was another show that it came on next to. And so like I was having to choose and I lost, lost with Bradley J and I got the boot, man. Game of Thrones was second in the series finale. And How I Met Your Mother is another one, um, which, I, which I wasn't disappointed in How I Met Your Mother. I was it's like so <laughs> Yeah, and like Seinfeld too. I wasn't disappointed with that finale either. I was like, okay, I kind of like this man. All the characters coming back. Um, other vote getters included Sherlock, Prison Break, and Dexter. Dexter was another one that people mm. said, yeah, that was disappointing. But what? Here's the thing about Dexter. Like, so the the series ran. Nobody liked the ending, but now they're bringing it back. Yes, I did. I did hear about that. They are, yeah. It's just like, oh, that doesn't work. Okay, let's just bring it back then whatever they're breaking tv rules they shouldn't do that they are there 24 was another one where it was kind of mm. like i didn't know how they were going to end that either like again like i said i'm not really disappointed i'm just like sad that shows um superstore was one which that ending wasn't disappointing either um catching but, up on that i'm watching the final season i saw i i saw that i hadn't i had missed it so i gotta i gotta i'm, re I'm watching season six right now actually the bad part about Superstore is it wasn't as good without America Fria, Ferra, Ferraro, Ferrero, uh, Ferro. I think I, I, I'm not for sure. But you know how you know who I'm talking about. Yes. Without yes. Amy, without Amy being there, it's just not quite the same. Like the the season, she does come back. I'll, I'll tell you that. Just to not to ruin it for you, but there's a reason right. she. Because you figure like they can't end the series without her coming back. No, like that just right. wouldn't make sense. 
but uh yeah she came back and in the show like instantly it was just like you could tell like it came back and you're like oh that's that's what the show is missing amy season season six i can tell you so far from what i've watched is just you know it, i just know right off the bat while they're watching a few episodes it's not as good as the other seasons yeah um, it's not it's not i agree with you brooklyn 99 ser ser series finale is going to be coming up Yes, I know. Is it? Is this the last season? This is the last is. season, isn't it? Oh, God, you, you guys are killing me with these, getting rid of these shows. I, but I will say this. Um, when it comes to TV, I will say this. I'm just saying, Marco. If you haven't started, if you haven't started watching MODOK, the animated one on Hulu, watch it. I'm waiting. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's on right now. You got to start. You got to start. Oh, my gosh. It, um, Patton. Um, Robert. You know who I'm talking no, not Robert Patton, not Pattinson, not not the Twilight guy. Oh, um, God, I can't think of his name now. I just saw it, but um, he's in it. He's Modoc. It's funny though, and, but it's not for children, so don't have your roommates watch it. Of course, no, don't. Have... <laughs> I'm sure. just kidding. I'm just kidding. Your roommates, I love your. I, I don't really. I've never met him. I met Armand once on when he walked through. One, uh, I'm just kidding. Tell, I'm just, if they see this, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. Can't take a joke. Come on, come on. I'm kidding. No, it's a good show, though. It's a good show. You should watch it. You should watch wait. it. That's what yesterday but, I did. I, I I caught up on all of my shows from because I didn't watch TV in Puerto Rico. Unfortunately, I caught up. On, Zoe Zoe's playlist season two loved it. Loved season ending season two. I gotta. Oh yeah, because um. Oh, I think I did. I finish that one. I gotta go back and watch it if I haven't. I gotta go check that out. All right, man. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you caught up. It's good to see you. You look refreshed. You look ready to go. Um, don't forget, Marco and your roommate Armand have a show, a podcast that you guys do. What Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at ten o'clock? Yes, but next Tuesday is going to be our final episode. Oh, the, if you guys want to get in on it, yeah, check it out. Mon uh, so next, what you said, Friday. Tuesday. This one's gonna be Tuesday because Memorial Day is Monday. Okay. All right. So, oh man, I'm I'm a little I'm a sad. I saw it was on to no yesterday. Today yeah. or yesterday? My uh, yesterday. My co-host he got a big boy job that he's getting ready for. He got, he got himself he got himself some training this summer before he starts in the fall. Well, tell him congratulations from Bradley J, man. That's awesome. Well, I mean, you guys can catch it the, the last episode, and you, it's probably on your Facebook page, or it's probably out there somewhere else. You guys got it somewhere else. Coffee's on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. There you go. You can catch that. And we're also, we put the show on the 94.5 Countries Facebook page. Um, we put it on YouTube. It, it'll be up tomorrow. Facebook, it won't be up till Thursday. But because um, I'm slow and I'm busy and I got things to do. Marco just comes on and talks on the show. And the behind the scenes work is this guy oh, doing yeah. all the work. That's why we pay Marco in um, that concrete stuff from Culver. So. Next time you're in but town, we'll go, go we'll, the tunnel really quick. <laughs> exactly. Next time you're in town, we'll go. We'll go to Culver's and eat, man. I'll buy. I'll buy for you. Too sweet. You're too sweet. You're sweet like Reese's. <laughs> that's it. That's. Uh, I fill up on that, man. I fill up on that. All right, man. I'll let you go. Uh, thanks for everybody for tuning in, Marco. We will talk next uh, Tuesday. Yes, we will. Looking forward. All right, to man. It. Peace. <laughs>